Yo, welcome to the New Number Podcast. Today, I got a fire topic to talk about. But before we get started, y'all make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, and make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. Today, we're going to be talking about Kamala Harris. Um, the reason we're going to be talking about her is because I've been seeing a lot of people talking about black men this, black men that, black men vote, but vote for her, black men vote but vote for Democratic Party. Um, it's crazy that we have so many people wanting to speak to black men all of a sudden. I've been voting since 2008, and they have never just addressed black men by themselves and by themselves alone. You would think, and I always say this, why would you have to address black men and black women separately when there's a black community issue? And I know why, because they know that black men and black women are not together. What's even crazier is them addressing black men and black men for the most part vote the same way as black women mostly. So it's weird that they're trying to address black men like this. And I don't know if it's because they believe this race is going to be that close or they think that many black men are going to deviate and go red this time or Republican. I don't know. Or they're just trying to make sure that they can manipulate your vote to see if we can keep you another four years on the Democratic side. So I don't know why they're doing y'all put in the comment section what y'all think. Do you think it's going to be a blowout? Do you think they want to close? Do they are they trying to just steal gauge and trying to make sure they can keep black men on the Democratic side, I've seen a lot of podcasters, a lot of channels that I watch where a lot of black men are in these spaces saying they're not voting for Kamala. And I would argue, and I know a lot of people might disagree with this, but I will argue so many black men were raised by their mother. And if Kamala identifies as a black woman, you definitely don't want to sit up under someone that you think is a bad representation for black women because the woman that raised you was not a good representation for you your, your and your siblings and for the community. So that's why I think a lot of black men are like, ah, I know what my mama put me through. I don't want to go through the same thing. Now, do I think by and large that most people or black men, when they're raised by their mothers, their mothers raised them to be simps? I would argue that probably... 65, 70% of the time, I would argue that. But when a lot of men are growing up, getting in these spaces, um, being around other black men, under and getting in these relationships and understanding that maybe I handle conflict like my mother. Maybe I don't get along with a lot of men because it wasn't a lot of male figures in my life. So the way that I'm handling confrontation with other men is how my mother would handle it. Or maybe I'm in these groups where it's a lot of other black men that were raised by their mother, and we all act alike, and we're all trying to work through the shit that our mothers put us through. So I think I see a, a big rise in a lot of black men speaking out, hey, look, my mama did this to me, my mama did that to me. You know, we always give women a pass. She did the best she could. Okay, that's the same old, same old rhetoric. Same old, same old rhetoric, but she didn't decide to marry your daddy first. Go figure. She didn't decide to marry your siblings' daddies first either. Go figure. She continues to repeat a cycle. Continues to repeat a cycle, and it's over and over and over, and she never gets any backlash or anybody questioning her actions. They tell us don't judge people. Don't judge them off their baby daddies because she's a new person. But y'all see every first of the year, which is right around the corner, so many people that's going to make a New Year's resolution and not be fat no more going to be fat three years from now. That is the truth. They're going to make a new year in 2025. You're going to see somebody make a new year's resolution to not be fat, to lose weight. And in 2028, they still going to be fat as fuck. So I'm just saying we should judge women by their baby daddies. I know women want to be like, no, don't judge me. I was a different person then. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't think we can do that because men understand you got to judge me for my whole life with all that encompasses me. Nobody will ever say we shouldn't judge Puffy because he was raping women 10 years ago. He's not that person anymore. Nobody will ever be like, oh, we're not going to judge him for 10 years ago. They would be like, hey, nigga, well, I'm going to look at you side eye. You mean you tell me uh, 10 years ago 
you was doing this and now you're not doing it, you have a kind of like a proclivity maybe to want to do this to women. Same thing I would ask about baby mamas. Now you want me to judge you by your baby daddy? That was 10, 12, 15 years ago. And all of a sudden you different. You might have a proclivity to like, fuck niggas. I'm just, I'm just saying. And we're going to apply the rules and a lot. Let's apply the rules and a lot to everything that we do in life. Not just to you and your baby mommy is. Okay. So what we're about to do is review Kamala Harris's interview with Fox News. And I know a lot of people have been doing this. I just want to get my take on it. So we're going to start and watch this uh, interview that she has with Brett on Fox News. Let's get started. Madam Vice President, thank you for the time. Thank you. It's good to be with you, Brett. You know, voters tell pollsters all over the country and here in Pennsylvania that immigration is one of the key issues that they're looking at this election, and specifically the influx of illegal immigrants from more than 150 countries. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a number. Is, do you but, think it's but, 1 million, 3 million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay. The point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and, Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of not, apprehension. Not, okay, let's start there. We are going to tally up how many times she evades answering a question or switches the subject or try to bash Donald Trump. I've been seeing so many interviews where they let her slide, especially if she's sent across from a black man. Because black men, how dare you question a black woman like Charlemagne the God. Charlemagne the God does not mean no good to black men. He does not. He hate. I'm telling you, I think Charlemagne, Charlemagne the God hates black men, and that's why that nigga skin got then got so light. I'm gonna say that again. Charlemagne the God hates black men. That's why his skin has gotten so light. Because Charlemagne was darker than me, and Charlemagne damn near uh, DJ Envy color. There's no reason for you to be bleaching your skin like that, and then be talking to Kamala Harris because she's not a black woman, but. You know, that's here and there because I think black people don't understand nationality. I don't think black people understand that concept. But we're going to tally up how many times Kamala evades an answer. I'm not finished. We have a, we have it's a an rough immigration estimate of six million people have been released be... into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question. I promise you. I was beginning to answer. And <laughs> when when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. Most significantly, the policy that required illegal immigrants to be detained through deportation, either in the U.S. or in Mexico. And you switched that policy. They were released from custody awaiting trial. Did y'all hear that? So a policy that Trump had in place, the Trump administration, because people are always like to say. Trump, now this is what I did not know. So when I'm listening to this, I'm going to say this. This is as backwards. So they were saying that Trump told them not to pass the immigration bill or the border bill because they wanted something to run on. He wanted something to run on, right? I'm thinking they talking about a bill while he was in office just in case he didn't run. No, the Democrats were already in office. This is 2021, and they still didn't pass this bill. Not talking about them having the House, the Senate, and the White House, and we have six Democrats that voted against this bill. I know they're going to talk about it here, but when you're doing research, it's like, damn, y'all trying to blame this on Trump. Y'all got everything y'all need to pass the damn bill. Why haven't you? So instead, included in those were a large number of single men, adult men, who went on to commit heinous crimes. So Looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration? At the beginning of our administration, within practically. Do you regret terminating the Remain in Mexico? Do you regret that? She's not answering that question again. 
This is a yes or no question. Simple. Yes or no. The hours of taking the oath, the first bill that we offered Congress before we worked on infrastructure, before the Inflation Reduction Act, before the Chips and Science Act, before any, before the bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It and, was essentially so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the finish, Yes, ma'am. May, may I finish responding, please? But, you, but, this, but you have to let me finish. You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. I'm in the middle of responding to the point you're raising. Okay. But well, bitch, you ain't answering no questions. Bitch, you ain't answering no questions. And I don't know if y'all noticed, Dad is supposed to have a longer interview, but I think she had ended up uh, coming late to this interview. So that's why he's rushing her and trying to rush through these questions the way that he's doing. But this is simple and an easy thing to research for anybody to look up a lot of people keep talking about trump and immigration and wanting to run on something when the democrats are letting people into our country he said six million roughly a rough estimate of six million people have come into this country right if six million illegal immigrants have come into this country, do y'all know that number has already replaced a black voting block? That's a rough estimate because I've heard it could be high as 20 million people. 20 million. There's only 40 million black people in America. And I'd like to finish. Yes, ma'am. In the world of e-commerce, it's always crunch time, especially for your cash flow. Ah, oh, hell. They would have a, uh, what my mouth said? They would have a, uh, hold on y'all. Cause I don't know what's going on, but they would have this. You need more inventory for a busy season. You need a PPC campaign to push your listing to page one. You want new products to grow your business. It all costs money, but you're still waiting for your. We recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question, it is a priority for us as a nation and for the American people. And our focus has been on fixing a problem. And from day one then, we have done a number of things, including to address our asylum system and put more resources, getting more judges, what we needed to do to tighten up penalties and increase penalties for illegal crossings, what we needed to do to deal with Points, points of entry between border entry points. That's the work we did. And we worked on supporting what was a bipartisan effort, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress, to actually strengthen the border. That border bill would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border, which is why I believe the Border Patrol agents supported the bill. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States, which is a scourge affecting people of every background, every geographic location in our country, killing people. It would have allowed us to put more resources into prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, which I have done yes, as the attorney general, former attorney general of a border state. Madam Vice President, a couple of things. This is the most long-winded answer, right? And really, all she's doing is just talking and rambling on. Just so she could waste time. That's all this woman is doing. 
trafficking of drugs, six, guns, and human beings. And six Donald Democrats, Trump, but let me just finish. Six and Democrats Donald voted Trump against that bill. Learned about that bill and told them to kill it because he preferred to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And, and I'm going to say this again Donald Trump was not in the White House. When this bill was up to be voted on. I'm thinking this nigga walking out the White House and say, yeah, we're going to throw this shit in the trash. Let them handle it. And we'll we'll worry about that when I run again. No, this is 2021. And they have border policies already established that they went and did all these executive orders to overturn. Because Donald Trump had a remain in Mexico. That the Democrats said, fuck it. And in this election, this is rightly a discussion that the American people want to have. And what they want are solutions. And they want a president of the United States who's not playing political games with the issue. I hear you. But actually is focused on fixing Six it. Six Democrats voted against that bill. It would have allowed 1.8 million illegal immigrants into the country a year. A lot, a lot of conservatives had a problem with it. These are the six Democrats. But more importantly, back to the original premise, Jocelyn Nungary, Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration, well before a negotiated uh, bipartisan bill. Former President Clinton actually referred to Lakin Riley Sunday campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lakin Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, this is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying but, to you, no, do you no, no, owe no, those right. families I think it's really, I think an it, apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. Hold on. As a parent, right, listening to this, the first words that should have came out of her mouth was, I'm sorry, and I'm deeply and terribly disturbed by what happened to those families. I want to give my apologies, and I would have said each one of those names to those people of, of the, the young lady slain by these illegals, I would have said each one of their names and then would have looked dead in the camera and gave a sincere apology. If you're going to backpedal and try not to look like a shitty person or a person that is heartless, like you're looking now because you don't want this shit on your face, well, you're just smearing it in now. There's no question about that. There's no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a border security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together. Madam Vice Do y'all know nine months ago they were still in office? Like nine months ago, they were still in office. So why would you be talking about nine months ago when these young ladies still would have been killed and the border policy still would have been asked? To ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election, because there was a solution, Brett. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. Now, this at the top says September 10th, right? Now, I don't know if that means September 10th, 2020. I mean, 2024. But if it is, and she's still talking about this. This is crazy. 
Because if I'm not mistaken, most of these happened last year and in 2022. If I'm not mistaken. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter, Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss. Sincerely. Dummy, that's what you should have did. The first time he asked. The first time he asked, you should have straight up, I'm sincerely sorry, and I apologize. I apologize. I'm the fucking vice president. I apologize, and this would not be an extension of Joe Biden's presidency, which she will say later on. But this is the point where she should have driven that home, that we're going to do different things differently under my administration. All I can do is get this nigga in adv some advice. And I told him, hey, we should have did X, Y, and Z. So I'm just going to let everybody know I apologize, and I'm going to work my damnedest to make sure this doesn't happen again. But let's talk about what is happening right now with an individual who does not want to participate in solutions. Let's talk about that as well. But do you Brett, want to in, answer in her? all fairness, I told you, I feel awful for what she and her family have experienced. During that time, you said repeatedly that the border was secure. When in your mind did it start becoming a crisis? Would you be interested in collecting? We've had a broken immigration system transcending, by the way, Donald Trump's administration even before. This is stupid to say. How do you have a broken immigration policy before Donald Trump, but then blame immigration on Donald Trump? Because if I'm not mistaken, the last six, 12 of the 16 years have been ran by Democrats. That's just what I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say the last 12 of the last 16 years have been ran by Democrats. Let's, let's all be honest about that. I have no pride in saying that this is a perfect immigration system. I've been clear, I think we all are, that it needs to be fixed. We need more, I was just down at the border talking with border agents and they will. And you was down there for a photo op because the people in Chicago and all these other people that's getting their uh, uh, apartment buildings taken over by these illegals have been complaining so much and there's so much news and broadcasting about it. We have, I've been watching like the city council meetings, the city council meetings in Chicago. They said the gangs, the black gangs have united to take on illegals. Trying to understand how crazy that is if you know how gang culture works in America. If a blood in the crib say, hey, bro, we can't even fight each other right now because we got the same enemy right now. These illegals, they ain't playing. And I don't know if y'all ever seen when they be like the world deadliest prisons and stuff like that. And they go down to like Venezuela and El Salvador and these places right there. And these... The jails are lawless. We, we, we always say in America how people don't value life and they got nothing to live for. We're talking about people who literally sleep outside in dirt. Their prisons are so overran when you look in the jail cells. It's hundreds of them like all, all just packed in like sardines. No bed in sight on dirt floors and bars just in dirt. It ain't even a real building. It's just like outside with bars. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing machetes, mach fucking machetes in the prison. In America, you at least have to be smart enough to make a shank. They have machetes in the jail. All right. I tell you, and I'm sure you probably, I know you investigate and you are a serious journalist. They will tell you, we need more judges. We need to process, we need to process those cases faster. We need the support for those cases that should be prosecuted.
They need more resources, and Congress ultimately is the only place that that's going to get fixed, Brett. Well, that's how the system that's, works. That's the premise that's, of this question. But there were 90-plus executive orders that were rescinded in the first days. Many of those were Trump border policies. I'm not going to stay here because there's other things to talk about, but you frequently talk to the Border Patrol Union for support of that bipartisan bill, and they did. They supported it. But they also just endorsed Donald Trump and said, you've been, quote, a failure with border security. Why do you think they said that? I think they're frustrated, and I get it. They want support. They want support. Do you know how dumb that sounds? I get it. They're frustrated. It's a drunk-ass answer. They want support. Well, bitch, hasn't your administration been in the office the last four years? So why don't they feel like they have support for the last four years? If they need support, why haven't you gave it to them? Support, give it to them. They wouldn't be frustrated. They wouldn't endorse Donald Trump. You wouldn't have to be taking photo ops and now passing executive orders like two or three months before the election so people feel like you're now doing something for the border because y'all have literally just let any and everybody come through the border. And if y'all ever seen like the border videos of people crossing or the videos or the pictures, these people have new jackets on. These people have new backpacks on. They have new shoes on. Like, where the fuck is they getting all of this shit to make this trick? And why the fuck y'all at the border? Listen to this. Y'all at the border with new shit on. This is what I said. Y'all are at the border before you cross it with new shit on. That don't even make sense. Because even if, let's say hypothetically, it was planned and you somewhere where you got a trick a couple of hundred miles, and they say, hey, here goes some new shoes, backpacks, uh, jackets, uh, whatever. They gave you some new shit. That shit would be dirty as hell by the time you walk that damn far. From the videos that I've seen that they were showing at the border, some of these people had to walk through woods. Some people got to come through the swamps. They were showing all them videos in 2022 of people crossing this dangerous river that the, if, you, if you cross at the wrong spot, the water current will pull you under and drown you. How, how the fuck y'all shit at the border is still new? That don't even make sense. Support, and that's what that border security bill would have done. These guys down at the border, these men and women, they're working hard. They're working around the clock. I get it. There's a lot of people that look back at what you said in 2019 when you first ran for president. Uh, and there have been changes, and you've talked about some of them. When it comes to immigration, you supported allowing immigrants in the country illegally to apply for driver's license, to qualify for free tuition at universities, to be enrolled in free health care. Do you su still support those things? Listen, that was five years ago, and I'm very clear that I will follow the law. I have made that statement over and over again, and as Vice President of the United States, that's exactly what I've done, not to mention before. You, if that's the case, you chose a running mate, Tim Walz, who governor of Minnesota, who signed those very things into state law. So do you support that? We are very clear. And <laughs> Did y'all see how she looked down at him? Like, what else this bitch got on this motherfucking paper? What else he got? What else he got? And now, I got, now he, he throwing these hard ass questions at me because Charlemagne the God said, are you going to support reparations? Are you going to sign it in the bill? And you know what she did? Well, we got a steady reparations. Kamala. With no pushback. I was a Kamala. 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 Y'all done gave about a hundred billion dollars to motherfucking Ukraine. Kamala, quit playing with me. Quit fucking playing with, do I, he, Charlamagne does look stupid. He looks stupid as fuck from going from, you know, like the first Michael Jackson we met to now the second, like he's like the middle Michael Jackson and a few more years, he'll be the no-nose Michael Jackson. That's what Charlamagne going to be. He, he was, when I first met him, he was the little Gary Indiana Michael Jackson. Then when we, now he's the bubbles, Michael Jackson. You just see him walk around with bubbles and then pretty soon he'll be the, the no-nose owning the Beatles, Michael Jackson. Because this is crazy that we have black men that are able to sit in front of her and ask her pertinent questions to help black men. That we're going to have conversations with black men. And why the fuck do y'all always have these gay niggas uh, in front of us? Like the shade room. As if 
black men, gayness and blackness is synonymous with each other. And I don't trust nobody. I really don't trust too many homosexual people, especially black, because a lot of them try to put their gayness before their blackness. And they always make this excuse. Well, when I walk at the house, they don't know if I'm straight or gay, but they do know if I'm black. Well, that would be my argument too. But as I always seen, y'all, y'all never at the Black Lives Ra Black Lives Matter rallies, but y'all sure gonna go to a pride event. Y'all always say that people make time for the stuff that they find important or the things that they want to do. Y'all surely do that a lot. But going back to Kamala. She like she had a hard time processing what he just asked her. And she always talks with her hands. I really hate that. But I'm going to say something. Kamala, I'm very Kamala probably used to be bad as hell back in the day. About, about 20, 30 years old, Kamala is probably sexy as hell. Very clear, as is Tim Walls, that we must support and enforce federal law. And that is exactly what we will do. So she didn't answer that question. Either. That's the third question she didn't answer. Your or your your vice president sign uh sign something in the law. How do you feel about it? Do you support that? Decriminalizing border crossings, like you said in 2019. I, I do not believe in decriminalizing border crossings, and I've not done that as vice president. I will not do that as president. So these are evolutions I, and, and, but, that you've had. No, but let's be very clear. I'm the only person who's running for president who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations from the Sinaloa cartel to the Guadalajara quota cartel to people who have trafficked in guns, drugs, and human beings. I have spent a significant part of my career going after people who present a threat to the safety of the American people and, and cross our border with the intent of doing us harm and cross our border illegally. And I will do that work as vice president. I take that work quite seriously. This is a time when voters, especially here in Pennsylvania, are inundated with commercials and ads. They mm -hmm. just want it to stop because it's every commercial. But many of them add noise, but a few of them seem to break through. This particular one from the Trump campaign has gotten a lot of attention. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Do y'all see that big-ass man beside her for prisoners? For prisoners. I bet that's what one of Elon Musk robots sound like. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would... Y'all didn't see that, that big man beside her? Hold on. I can go back a little bit. Here you go. Just for prisoners. Surgery. That's a man right there. We live in a weird time. I got, we live in a weird time. And you know what's crazy when people have stuff figured out thousands and maybe millions of years, like man and woman, that's been figured out. And we're supposed to be advancing as a civilization, but it's actually like we're regressing, like with people with their IQs and being smart and what we de deemed as mental health and, you know, with gender and stuff. Like we're trying to figure that out again um, and sex and all of this stuff. Like it's weird that we had to figure it out when we're supposed to be a more primitive people, but now that they're, we're more technologically advanced. We seem to be a lot more dumber. Hey, I'm wrong. Um, for prisoners. For, for prisoners. I'll be back. Prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. Do you know how crazy it is? The same thing they got mad at Donald Trump. Y'all remember when they got mad at Donald Trump because he stopped people from going to the military just to get sex changes? Yeah, I remember that. They was mad at him talking about he didn't like trans people and gay people and woo to woo because he signed he um went and signed something to say that people can't go to uh the military just to get sex changes. These people are sick. So are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? 
my new book, Keyboard Rich. Well, and it's a law that... Their dollars ...to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender. I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Um, you're probably familiar with, now it's a public report that under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available to, on a medical necess necessity basis, to people in the federal prison system. And I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know, you got to take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no. Oh, my God. Did you just say that's like throwing rocks when you live in a glass house? You got to take what? Responsibility for what? One, you the borders are, and that's even crazy. I just thought about this Charlemagne the guy interview. He tried to say that she was never the fucking borders on. We can look at plenty of articles of her calling her the uh, uh, of everybody calling her the borders are. As a matter of fact, why did she just say in this interview? Well, I went down there to talk to the people at the border. Woo -woo. Bitch, because you was the borders are. Your whole thing, when you first got in the office, everybody said, well, we got so many immigrants coming, illegals coming into this country. Where's Kamala? She's not saying anything about it. She's not doing anything. She's not even taking photo ops that she's down there doing anything. I know she was getting drunk. But damn, baby, you can go and take a picture drunk. You could have got the secret service to keep everybody back from you having to answer questions. You're just taking a picture. You're going to fly on Air Force One. It's going to take you two seconds to get down there, hop out the plane, take the picture, jump back on the plane, get drunk while on the plane, and go back home. That's all you got to do. No surgeries happened in this pregnancy. It's, it's in so black and white. Would you still advocate for using taxpayer dollars for gender reassignment surgeries? I will surgeries? follow the law. Just I will follow the law. That's not what he asked you. Will you use... Or do you believe in taxpayer money going to prisoners transitioning? That is a yes or no answer. Because you can say, well, she says she's going to follow the law. So the law says she can't do X, Y, Z. But what does she believe? Because we don't know when she gets into office, what she will and won't change. A lot of the shit, most politicians, even Donald Trump, they say one thing, but it's only so much they can do because the way the government is set up, there's it's checks and balances. And we all learned this in civics class. There's checks and balances there. So it's only so much power that you can have to do certain things, right? So it's, we'll see. It was a yes or no. It's, an, it's like the fourth or fifth question she did not answer. It's just, I, I, I think Donald Trump would say he did. You would have a say as president. I like I said, I think it's really goofy, bitch. You have a say at president. You will have a say as president. Do you y'all know what that means, right? That mean like somebody might come up with a bill and what they say, well, I can massage it on through. Because if I say and speak and know these people in these positions, hey, you know, and that's just that's how life works. Hey, do me a favor. Pass that bill so them niggas in the jail can get their dicks cut off, or uh, a woman can get a, a, a dick took it off her leg and put on her pussies. Just pass that real quick, and, and you know I got you. I'm gonna send you a couple meal down there, or if you know you need you run for president, I can endorse you or whatnot. Pass the bill for me real quick. He spent twenty million dollars on those ads, trying to create a sense of fear. In how do you know how much he spent on the ads, though? In the voters, because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people. Whereas at $20 million on that ad, on an issue that as it relates to the biggest issues that affect the American people, it's really quite remote. And again, y'all keep putting abortion. I'm gonna say something. Y'all keep putting abortion, women's rights above American people. You mean to tell me being able to feed and put food and keep lights on is not as important as a bitch wanting to go and put her damn 
pussy on the table and let a doctor put a blender in it? That what you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me uh, 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 um, being able to put gas in my car and have money just in case I have a breakdown? Because y'all remember the whole doing, doing the whole presidency of you know Joe Biden. They kept saying families don't have a thousand dollars saved up just in case of an emergency. Y'all remember that? You mean to tell me that's not important as a bitch that want to go and let them crack her baby legs and arms like she had a seafood ball at the abortion clinic? This don't make no sense. And his policy was no different. Look at where we are, though. They on plans for the American people, on. I'm offering a plan to deal with affordable housing. I'm offering a plan to deal with what we need to do to strengthen small businesses, which are the backbone of America's economy. I am offering a plan that is about taking care of young parents and giving them the support they need. My plans for the economy will strengthen the economy. Right. Another thing is quit trying to tell people you're going to get them tax credits for all these goddamn kids, because that's why we have so many people having children now and women back back. Like in the early 70s, they understood that if I had a baby, I could put a nigga on child support and, and they ain't got to go to work. I can get government assistance and pay $25 to stay in a, in a decent place. I can get food stamps. I can get so much shit just to have, by having a kid because the government will pay for it. Instead, we need to do more of telling people we're not going to incentivize you from doing stupid shit and having kids when you're not financially stable. Even talking about you're going to give people money to get these houses and shit like that. Like if you don't have the money or you don't, you're not working or putting your best foot forward to put yourself in a position to make money to buy a house. No, the government should not assist you in those type of things. Now, now I'm going to say this. That's how the world works now. And you see a lot of people become lazy and dependent and you let a person feed you. If you always got your hand out, so if a person that can feed you, they can also starve you, which I'm not cool with. And I don't think my people should be cool with either. But on the flip side of this shit, everything in America could be free. It could. We got plenty of solar power panels. We got much land to literally power our whole United States from solar panels. And if you look this up, solar panels are only can own. This is a government regulation. Solar panels can only be efficient up to 30 percent. I know sounds crazy. But the government only allows solar panels to be efficient up to 30%. Don't believe me? Just look it up. Water. We should not be paying for water. Just, just shouldn't. You got a black man up north somewhere that makes water. He got machines that makes water up there in, I think, Flint, uh, out of water, out of uh, vapors in the air. Should not be paying for water. The nigga that came up with the idea we're gonna put water in the ball and sell it was a fucking genius. I'm not gonna lie, because you would be thinking, water is free. Nobody's gonna pay for that. Yeah. Have y'all been seeing the, the companies lately that have been um putting air in bottles lately? That's the thing, too. Um, yeah, so like I said, the flip side of how I view this, everything in America be free could be free it could be free as fuck it could be efficient we can we can have cars that drive themselves we don't need to pay for we have lights that we don't need to pay for we can have food that we don't need to pay like everything could literally be free but it's gonna be hard for everything to be free because you need a poor class to have classism right because you gotta ask yourself if i could send eight trillion dollars or eight billion dollars to ukraine that would probably end homelessness in America. Could easily probably end homelessness or or at least um a food drought. 
as have been reviewed by 16 Nobel laureates, uh, Goldman Sachs, Moody's, and recently the Wall Street Journal, which have all studied our plans and have indicated my plans for our economy would strengthen our economy, his would make them weaker, why do you would think ignite more people inflation, say, and invite a recession by the middle of next year. Those you, are the facts. Why do you think more people say they trust him on the economy than they trust you? Why do you think people feel like they trust or say they trust him more on the economy then they trust you. That's the question that he asked, right? I think that when you look at an analysis of our plans for what we would do as president of the United States, it has been clear to those who study and understand how economic policy works that moving forward, because I do believe the American people are ready to turn the page on the divisiveness and the, the type of rhetoric that has come out of Donald Trump, people are ready to chart a new way forward. And they want a president who has a plan for the future and a plan that is sound and will strengthen our country. My plan for the economy does exactly that. His plan would be again to give. Did she answer the damn question, y'all? And she's been talking for a minute now. A minute is a long time to talk. Did she answer why people trust him more than her when it comes to the economy? Tax cuts to billionaires and the biggest corporations in our country and blow up our deficit. It's interesting you said turn the page, Madam Vice President. You were asked on two different shows last week what, if anything, you would do differently than President Biden. Here's yeah. what you said. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most. Well, what about them immigrants, them illegals killing, the illegals killing those young ladies? Most of the decisions that have had impact. Under a Harris administration, what would the major changes be and what would stay the same? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Um, I know. And so yes. that would be one change yes. in terms of. Yes. But also, it, I think it's important to say with, you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. So you're not Joe Biden. You're not Donald Trump. But but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently. Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. I, for example, am someone who has not spent the majority of my career in Washington, D.C. I invite ideas, whether it be from the Republicans who are supporting me, who are, were just on stage with me minutes ago, and the business sector, and others who can contribute to the decisions that I make about, for example, my plan for increasing the supply of housing in America and bringing down the cost of housing, addressing the issue of small businesses, which is about working with the private sector to bring more capital and access to capital to our small business leaders, including my plan mm -hmm. for a $25,000 down payment assistance for first time home buyers we've, and for small businesses, extending the tax deduction from $5,000 to $50,000. We've heard a lot about those plans in, in recent days. Your campaign slogan is a new way forward and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years. So what are you turning the page from? Huh? Mm well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we've been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country and have Americans literally point fingers at each other. Rhetoric Let's be clear. America has always been divided. Always been divided, right? Division really comes from the Democratic side. You know what I mean? Why, why I say that? Because you have people like Joe Biden go on the Breakfast Club and tell them, tell Charlemagne, or talk to Charlemagne. I don't know if it was on the Breakfast Club or whatever, but he was talking to Charlemagne and he said, he said, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. That was me paraphrasing. 
if a white man has the gall to say that to a black man's face and the black man doesn't check him, that's divisive in nature. When you have black men and black women pointing fingers at people that look like them and call them all types of derogatory terms that white people used to call them in slavery like coon because they decide to vote a different way. That's divisive. When you tell people that you're going to run on identity politics, that's divisive in nature. It has nothing to do with the merit of a person, but the color, sex, gender, ideologies, whatever. Instead of having a merit-based candidacy or run for the White House, you decide to say black people should do this, black women are going to do this, you should follow this, you ain't black if you do this, you're a coon if you do this. White people, I'm gonna tell y'all something too, especially the white women. I love, I, I love, 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 love seeing those liberal white women join forces in the arms with black women. Cause this is gonna just take one time for you to say something that black women don't like, and they're gonna cast you away. You could be an ally for 30 years, but you say one thing that black women don't like and you all types of white bitches and who you think you is. And I really don't like white women. That's why you're not invited to the cookout. It's going to be a whole bunch of bullshit. They're going to say just one thing. You could just simply say, well, I don't think that's going to be conducive to the movement that you guys are putting, trying to put together. It can be something like that. It ain't got to be nothing. I don't think that's conducive to the movement that you guys are trying to put together. Well, what would you know? Y'all see this white girl trying to hold us down, hold us back. But, bitch, I done been putting in work 30 years with y'all. What you mean? I just said I don't think that's going to be smart. Rick and an approach to leadership that suggests that the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of what we all know. The strength of leadership is based on who you lift up. You, the strength Madam of an Vice American president. president, which is one who understands that the vast majority of us have more in common than what separates us. Madam that Vice is President, more than 70 percent of people. That is about posters. turning the page on rhetoric that People are frankly exhausted of Brett. More than people 70 percent of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They this is just a point finger. He spent what ten years pointing fingers at a rhetoric for Donald Trump. And you just point your finger at Donald Trump. Say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is. What they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person been, holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and I president. both know what I'm talking about. Bitch, you the, pre you the vice president. I can't believe you just said he running for all you. Bitch, you hold the power. You hold the power. talking about you and i both know what i'm talking about i actually about. don't what are you talking about of what i'm talking about i don't know what the fuck you talking about either bitch i ain't even get this far in the interview i don't know what you talking about either this shit is stupid is that over the last decade but people have become power. but listen over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me, the the, the former chief of staff to the president, Donald Trump, uh, former defense secretaries, national security advisor, and his vice president, one that he is unfit to serve, that he is unstable, 
that he is dangerous, and that people are exhausted with someone who professes to be a leader who spends full time demeaning and, and, and engaging in personal grievances and it being about him Madam instead Vice of President, the American people. People are the case, tired of that. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Why is he beating you in a lot of swing states? Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States? Why is that happening? This is an election for president of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. I know, but it's if not it's supposed as... to be. It, 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 it is not supposed to be a so cakewalk for So are they misguided, the 50 percent? Are I'm... they stupid? What, oh, what God, is it? I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy with... <laughs> She says she won't call people stupid. Hold on, y'all. Hold on real quick. She just said it, right? They might have took it off this bitch. <sighs> Now hold on, y'all. Hold on, let me let me share this one really quick. We'll come back to that. Let me let me share this one. I hope it plays. I don't know. I ain't watching. Just click it. Hopefully, it play it. Shows Vice President Kamala Harris calling young adults stupid. What else do we know about this population, eighteen through twenty-four? They are stupid. Some people are claiming she's referring to voters in a recent speech. Several Verify viewers emailed us asking if she really said that. So let's verify. Our sources are the original clip from the Ford Foundation and the California Department of Justice. The video is real, but many posts are missing important context. It's part of a 30-minute speech Harris gave. So we can see Kamala calls American citizens stupid. Now, if it's about voters or not, that's ain't, that ain't what we're talking about because she, I'm, she just talking about Donald Trump calling people stupid. So you do you do have the same rhetoric. Like I said, like you said, a glass, uh, uh, throwing a rock but living in a glass house or whatever you said. Within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people, suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. We asked that the question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was, like, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest. Oh no, it's right. true. We no, but think of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. So... Brett, I, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking about the American people. That's not what you just showed. Hold on. The enemy within, and you try to couple that with the American people. So are they? Are you trying to say he's saying the enemy within are the American people, or is he saying the enemy within and he's going to use the government to go against that I don't know if he said that, but right there he said he, the, the Democratic Party is weapon, weaponizing, um, weapon, weaponizing the government, which they are. Like even when you look at the Trump case, they what, what didn't they just appeal all the shit that he was doing in New York? Uh, I'm just asking. I don't know. Well, he was asked. No, that no, no. That's not what you just showed. In all no, fairness no, no. and I'm respect you, to that you, was the question that we asked him. Uh, you didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that, and you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy... Y'all take people Y'all take people off the internet for saying stuff y'all don't like. The president of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle 
criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. He's quoted in the Bob Woodward book that way, yes. L let me ask you this, no, Madam Vice President. You call Donald Trump. The you, you, you of that. call Donald Trump. Um, he's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. Is unstable. He is unstable, but uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Oh, this is a good question. I ain't like I said, I ain't watched it this far. Look, how are you gonna talk about everything going on with Donald Trump when bitch, you right here taking photo ops with Joe Biden? And you telling everybody he's on his A game? This is a great fucking question. Because how the fuck you know what Donald Trump is doing? You've been in office the last four years with Joe Biden, the man that you said was racist, and then decided to become to become his vice president. We can all go look it up when you run for president. And I think you was the first person to drop a, even drop out of the race. But that's neither here nor there. Need here nor there because we know most people don't really fucking like you. Eh. I just seen a black woman say, I don't want my president. I, I don't want the Democratic running because we can't run the government off giggles. That was so funny to me when she said it and the way she said it. I'm just being blunt and, you know, fast with it. She said, I don't want my country being ran off giggles. Because every time you ask this bitch a question, <laughs> oh, my God, bitch, that's not even a laughing moment. Have you heard of turtle traders? They were a group of 14 novice traders. Joe Biden, I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room, and he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe were Biden, no concerns Brett, raised. Brett, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. I understand. And but, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. But is, you talked about it. And Donald Trump after is. After George Clooney said within a few minutes of talking to Donald President Trump, Biden at a fundraiser that he. Do you understand why he's asking you that, woman? Of course, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. You know why? Because for some reason, after you say he was sharp as a fucking tech, they just inserted you that you didn't even go through the proper protocols to even become be running for president as we speak. That's why I do think they got some shit rigged up because they pushing you too hard to be the president. Why did y'all, why did you, you didn't even, you didn't even get the Democratic nomination. Like you didn't go through the proper channels to get that. They just said you were running. You are actually at this point, which is crazy. You are literally doing and showing up as the vice president. Y'all listen to how crazy this sound. They have they tell us time and time again, year after year, and when the president's run, the vice president don't do nothing, the vice president don't do nothing, the vice president doesn't do anything, right? Well, bitch, why the fuck is you on podiums at natural disasters instead of Joe Biden? in South Carolina and these other places. I thought y'all don't do nothing. I thought Joe Biden was supposed to be down here saying the stuff that you were saying, consoling the people that you're down here consoling. You're supposed to be taking it back. I've never seen when we had hurricanes and shit doing uh, Trump's presidency, Mike Pence out there talking to somebody, being on the podium talking about the people and what they're going to do and talk to them and blah, 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 blah. But... You are. You are trying to act like you are acting president right now. Hmm. He thought this right. was not the right. same Joe Biden that we saw on the Donald debate stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. I understand. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half. Donald Trump is on the ballot. The reason that I'm asking you this is because I'm trying to see if you're a fucking liar. I'm trying to see, do you know what you're talking about? 
I'm trying to see, do you even have any validity to even speak on a Donald Trump and his health and what he's trying to do? You know why I'm trying to do that? Because he might be a better candidate than you because he can probably tell that somebody has some type of cognitive decline and should be in the White House to surround himself with these people instead of you being there because you couldn't see Joe Biden have a cognitive de decline? I don't know. Half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump, which is why the people who know him best, including leaders of our national security community, have all spoken out, even people who worked for him in the Oval Office, worked with him in the Situation Room, and have said he is unfit and dangerous and should never be president of the United States again, including his former vice president, which is why the job was open for him to choose another running mate. So that is a fact. That is a fact. Madam Vice President, two more things. I hate how they talk about the job is open and people don't run with you. Y'all, 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 y'all know what? It was crazy. I hear a lot of black people. I don't know about white people. I don't, I don't mingle with a lot of white people, but I hear a lot of black people say this shit every so often. Don't fuck with me because I'm quick to cut people off. Oh, I'm cutting you off if you ain't doing X, Y, and Z. Oh, my cutoff gang be swift. Oh, my cut. Y'all always cutting the motherfucker off, but soon as. Uh, Donald Trump don't run with the same running mate or vice president. That's an issue. Y'all are always cutting people off. Every New Year's, we got soon as January, about December 25th, from after uh, uh, from Christmas to about January the 10th, y'all gonna be talking about your New Year's resolution, cutting people off if they not supporting your dreams and your, you being part of the tribe. But all of a sudden, now that Donald Trump is out here with different running mates and people on his, uh, uh, in, in his, um, uh, on his campaign, now all of a sudden that's an issue. Watch what I tell you. This would be a thing so many black people are going to get ready to do, talking about their cutoff game and so X, Y, and Z. This is crazy. This is crazy that so many people are allowed to speak but be so contradictory in the things that they speak about. It's going to be some bitches that seals are right now about to cut each other off. Come on now. You were asked on 60 Minutes about the biggest threat that the world faces, that the U.S. faces. This is what you said. Which foreign country do you consider to be our greatest adversary? I think there's a, an obvious um, one in mind, which is Iran. Iran has American blood on their hands. Okay. The, this attack on Israel, 200 ballistic missiles. Um, what we need to do to ensure that uh, Iran never achieves the ability to be a nuclear power, that is one of my highest priorities. A number of extra experts thought you would say China. Um, the FBI director had said that. But you said Iran. If that's the case, what do you say to critics? Uh, who look at the actions of your administration and say you're not acting like Iran is the number one threat? Well, I, I will tell you most recently, whether it was in April or in October, and then several hours on each occasion that Iran posed a threat to Israel. I was there. Uh, most recently in the Situation Room, in the most recent attack, working with the heads of our I'm going to say this. I don't want to watch no more of this because this shit is stupid at this point. She ain't answering out of one question in this bitch. She just filibustering and trying to run the time out. We only get 26 minutes. That minute, that interview is 26 minutes and she answering out one question. This shit is getting stupid. It's almost in fucking insulting um, to see that 
These are the candidates that we have running for us to run our country, to be the leader of 350 million people in our country and decide on what the fuck we get to do. Also, I do think we need to limit a lot of the federal government and a lot of stuff need to go back to the states. The reason that I say that is because you might not be a person that agree with abortion, but and uh, I think a lot of things, I'm going to just say like abortion is a hot topic and it's so big, but typically if you're a person that agree with abortion and a person that disagree with abortion, y'all morals are going to drastically be different i'm gonna say that if you're a person that agree with abortion and a person that disagree with abortion y'all morals are typically going to be drastically different so with that being said if you say in this state that abortion is legal well you might want to live in a state where the abortion is legal because it's probably gonna be even people that cut the dicks off and you know put put the peter wackers on and you know put titties on the head like it, it might be just a wild place to live and you should go stay in that state where a state that doesn't have that it might be a, a state about you know families and you know the nuclear family man and woman being together not transitioning kids like these are the things that most people most people now agree with it's i don't even know how we like some of these topics that are so mainstream when they such small percentage of people that are actually engage in it. it's not really that many trans people but for some reason, trans issues come up so much. Like, I still remember, like, 2020, it was like, well, nine trans people got killed, and we should act like it's it's, it's just plaguing America. And I'm like, nine? Fuck. We, got like, we have 140 motherfuckers get killed in Birmingham every year. Nine trans people? Oh. And if y'all don't know, and haven't noticed there have been a lot of videos of trans people coming out talking about how they trick men. Yeah, Sydney Starr literally just had a video about how she met a guy, the guy thought she was pretty, or he was pretty, whatever the, it supposed to be. And he kept saying he wanted to smash, smash, smash. And she said, no, I'm on my period. And then she said she ended he ended up letting him do it. And he ended up him in the booty. Hitting him in the booty. And uh he he dipped on him. Like they are they are literally saying it. I just seen a video of a trans person walking down the street. He said, Guess what, guys? With a weird voice, guess what, guys? Not only on my ID does it say I'm a woman, it says it on my birth certificate too. Oh my god! Yay! And I'm like, why would you want to put your woman on your birth certificate and your driver license? Gotta be the trick, motherfuckers, right? It gotta be like you know what, and this is real. This is just real. When we talk about like the trans community, this is real shit. I don't think nobody has an issue with trans people that are that look passing. Like when we had this issue about bathrooms, right? If you are a, a man that transitioned to a woman, if you could pass as a woman, nobody ever looks at you and be like, "Oh, that's a man in a dress," and you could walk into the woman's bathroom and pee and do your do. What? Nobody's on the same thing because you're passing, right? But it's you motherfuckers that be out here. That's a nigga in a dress with the beard. Like you have a beard like mine, and you walk around with a dress on, big, burly, buff. There's no way you passing as a woman. Now my kids are confused. Daddy, what is that? Is that a man or a woman? And I had to say, it's a it, son, because I don't know what it is. I had to tell my little five and three, uh, especially Creed. Creed, be. Son, I know. I'm lost for words, too. I don't know what the fuck that is, either. They just walked past us. Your guess is good as mine. I thought we had this shit figured out 5,000 years ago. 2024, I guess. I guess we don't. I, shit, shit is crazy. It's not that many trans people, but the trans issues are big. It's not that many gay people, but gay issues are big. Uh, I don't. I don't know. We always had, like, I think we, I, that's another thing that both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are going to have to try not to run on as much, right? And like, and, and I guess, I guess it's like a 
part of being a man is seeing shit and catching it before it goes and gets blown out of proportion. You know, the slippery slope that a lot of motherfuckers talk about, you never just want to be on that. You know, that's a slippery slope. When it starts, and get, you know, it just keeps going and then just becomes a big thing. Right? We don't want that. So, with that being said, Part of being a man is nipping shit in the bud when you see it, right? So you see your child doing X, Y, and Z, and you say, hey, don't do that. Or you pop their hand, or you give them an ass whooping. Because you got to let them know and be stern, especially if it's life life threatening or some shit that you don't want to be pervaded or them thinking that it's conducive to do in the house or you condone it, right? So you got to sometimes drastic shit. The things that they do drastically cause for drastic measures. So sometimes you do have to whoop their ass, right? It is what it is. So... When it comes to like these issues with trans shit and gay shit, I get it. I understand it. But I don't know if, if are they really that big of an issue? Same thing with I think the gun issue. Like, I don't think Democrats should really just run on like anything with like gun control. Yeah, and the reason I say that because there are so many other things that take lives way more and affect lives way more than guns, like alcohol. It's like one of the one of the worst things out there. You can look at many facets of why guns. I mean, alcohol is bad. Just saying, putting it out there. I think those are the things and the talking points that probably might need to be revamped in both of these parties when they talking about the stuff that they want to run against. But I guess both of these are polarizing because, you know, the, if you say that Democrats say gun control, the right says, oh, my First Amendment, my Second Amendment right, right to bear arms, you can't take that. Okay. And then you got the Republican Republicans talk about trans shit, gay shit, love who you love and all that. And then you have the Democrats saying, oh my gosh, no, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't impede on me. I want to be a, a bitch with a dick. You can't do that. Oh my God, I want to be a, oh my God, I just want to be able to walk around here with this big bulge in my pants and, and say that I'm a fucking female. Yay. You know, like they be like, that's impeding on civil rights and shit. You know, so those are like, I get it. Like, I, I understand those talk. I understand it. Shit. You know, it is what it is. But I want to say, black men, stay strong, stay diligent, and stay the fuck out the way. Don't be out here in these clubs. Don't be dating no baby mamas. The, just leave all the bullshit alone. Like all the the generosity in our community, it's gonna take. It's either gonna take the men because the women are gone. Women are sick and they don't even know they're sick. The women are sick and they don't know they're sick. They literally are mad that black men said we we're insulted by Kamala Harris's uh, plan for black men, talking about weed and and loans and loans, bitch, to put me more in debt. This problem now, why I feel the way I feel because a lot of the debt that I have that's weighing down on me. Now, granted, I don't have to get the debt, but if you're telling me that this is a good idea, why wouldn't I get the debt? If you say, hey, I got these loans for you, black guys, so you can get businesses and get houses, and I know the debt is bad for the most part, if I don't understand debt, then I'm going to get the loan because you motherfuckers told me it was a good idea, and now, now that I got the loan, and I got to pay it back, and now it's more pressure on me, and I felt like this was a great idea, and I'm just like so in, in despair, and I'm just getting beat down more and more and more. And more. I don't know what to do. God, please help me. I voted for the Democratic Party to get it because they told me they was going to give me some free hand that year, and then I found out that it wasn't as free as they told me that it was going to be, and they're coming back and whoop my ass. There's a lot of stuff that they give you is to come back and whoop your ass later. Because nothing in this world is free. Black men, be strong. Be wise. Learn from other people's mistakes. You don't have to bump your head. You don't have to go through the other shit that you see people doing. I don't even understand why a lot of people signed up to be baby mom, baby daddies, and we didn't see 
years and years and years of this shit. TV episode, a TV episode, podcast, YouTube video, cops episode. Like it's so much out there to show you, baby mama, baby daddy, shit is horrible. If you're not building a family dynamic, it is horrible. Niggas getting put in jail because they can't pay child support. I had a friend I was just talking about about 10 years ago. Me and him was real cool 10 years ago. Um, his baby mama called him to come pick up the kids because he'd been asking for the kids and she won't pull some bullshit. So he pulled up to the house. She called the police trying to act like he's trying to kidnap the kids. So I'm like, this is what y'all go through? He was like, yeah, this is, you know, typically what we go through. I'm not fucking kids. That's just me. I told him that. No, they ain't my kids. Boy, I'm never fucking with nobody that's gonna put me in no motherfucking jail. Fuck them kids and fuck her. I, if, people gotta understand, especially men. You can always go and get some more kids. You can always get some more kids. And the thing is, what, what people gotta understand, and this is the same with just some other shit. You can always go get some more kids and you can always do better than you did in the past with some shit that you always want. Like, let's say if I'm a good guy, right? I don't think people change in the past, but let's say I'm a great guy. And I just so happen to pick a fucked up female, right? And I want to be my kids life. I'm fighting them doing everything I need to do to try to be my children's life. But she's making it difficult. She's being a bitch. So you could just say, fuck those kids, right? What you do is go back to the drawing board, find a different woman to get the life that you're trying to live and treat those kids like you want to treat them. What eventually is going to happen is those kids are going to grow up and they're going to say, hey, dad, why didn't you treat me like you treat your kids now? What you will say is, well, go ask your bitch ass mama why I didn't treat you the way I, I, I wanted to treat you like I treated them. Go ask your mama all the shit she put me through that this woman never put me through. Go ask the time she put me in jail for child support that when I, when we was over here struggling, my wife was with me in the trenches and we were trying to get this money to feed my kids and do everything I needed to do and even pay child support for y'all ungrateful ass. Just go ask your mama because they say when kids get older, they understand who the problem is. Same thing if you dating a female. I want to treat you good. I want to be loving. I want to give you a word, girl. I want to do so much for you. Now, all of a sudden, she nut up on you. She done cheated on you. You a nothing-ass nigga. You been fucking on three years. Now, your dick little. All of this stuff has just blown out the water, right? You go back to the drawing board. You brush yourself off. You pick your better, bitch. You get successful. And now, when she see you out in the city, you looking good. You in shape. You got your new lady on your arm. And you got your family. And she out here big as a motherfucking house because she want to be in the streets and got all these kids and baby daddies and shit. And she can't do shit. Then you don't want. Because success is the greatest equalizer or the best get back. Success is the best get back you can have. Not going to beat a motherfucker up, not going to kill nobody, not going to slash no ties, not to going to bust no wonders out. In a relationship, success is going to trump anything that you do or that she has done or he has done to you in the past. Success. Yes. Getting that money. Being on red carpets. Uh, being respected in your field that you decide to work. Maybe going back to school, become a doctor, lawyer, having prestigious accolades. Those are things that are going to be the best revenge on anybody that plays with you. Anybody. Remember. Remember this. Success is your best revenge. And don't ever take that shit lightly. Peace. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Make sure y'all like the video, share the video. It's the new normal podcast, and we gone. Peace.